State Senator Drew Springer, thank you so much. We appreciate it. So your letter to the Senate has gotten a lot of attention in Austin and around the state, as you probably imagined. And so I'm wondering, have you, you know, what was the point? Tell us again why you felt it was so important to even ask if the state Senate, if there's any legal way for the state Senate to reopen impeachment hearings against uh, A.G. Ken Paxton. You know, we'd heard for months Ken Paxton say that he was innocent. He hadn't done anything, wanted to tell his side of the story. Uh, you know, we go to trial. He didn't testify, but his defense team, you know, made the case that, you know, there's nothing here. That we didn't do anything wrong. Um, you know, there was a lot of, you know, side type of deals. We voted to acquit. That doesn't mean completely innocent, but it didn't reach the standard. We go back. And it goes where it probably needed to be all along, which was in the courts. But in the court document last week, he files that, um, you know, the whistleblowers, the claims they make, what they are, I don't deny any of them. And that's a, basically a plea of guilt. That's what, you know, paragraph 11 says in it. Now, he comes out and tries to say that on social media and afterwards, well, I did it just to, to move it along. I really am not guilty. Well, you can't say you're guilty to try to get rid of it and then try to say you're innocent on in the eyes of the public. And I just, you know, I was offended by that. You know, we've taken our job serious, go down and hear the trial. Um, and if you're now going to come out and say what the whistleblowers said leading into the impeachment is accurate, then I think we need to reopen it. Do you believe you mentioned in your letter that uh, you said, Recent developments have made me question whether A.G. Paxton and his legal team misled the Senate. That's pretty strong. It is. And, you know, you you basically have said you're innocent and there is nothing here. And now you're saying, no, what they're saying is correct. Now just tell us how much we owe. And you're doing it because you don't want to be deposed. Ken Paxton has spent more time fighting deposition where, you know, most business people have been deposed in a lawsuit. You go in for four to six hours, you tell the truth and you and you go out. And if you if you're honest and haven't done anything, it's dismissed. That's what we all would have expected to have happened. But he's fought that and he's now willing to use taxpayers money to try to pay these guys, admit that he's guilty so that he also doesn't have to be deposed. And have you gotten any response? Have you heard from the lieutenant governor? Have you heard from other senators since you sent this letter? I've heard from other senators, uh, you know, that they uh, understand, support. They had the same reactions. I've also heard from House members that didn't even vote to convict Ken Paxton, that they feel that now with this admission that he's admitting that he's guilty. And I was checking with a... Uh, a legal expert, an appellate attorney, obviously not involved in the impeachment case. And he said when he looked at it there, he doesn't see any indication, any way that the Senate could reopen the impeachment hearings, that the House would have to re-impeach uh, Mr. Paxton. Uh, what, what's your reaction to that? You know, that's what we're trying to determine. That's why we wrote the letter uh, many times when we're in session. Uh, if a vote goes one way, we actually, if you're on the uh, prevailing side, you can ask for a vote to be reconsidered. Don't know if that's an option here. So trying to explore that, although I do think it probably is fairly limited and that very well, may very well push us back to where the House would have to, to start the process again. And we would just have to see if the House had an appetite to do that. And uh, let me ask you about uh, something that you said at the end of your letter that uh, before what you would like to see, and if it came up to a vote, you would like to see the attorney general answer his questions under oath before the legislature, um, before the case is settled. Is that what you're asking? Well, in the case that they're exploring, the legislature has to approve the spending of the money. And so the legislature can say, we want more facts before we are going to spend taxpayer dollars. Um, and so that is where I'm saying, if Ken Paxton is not deposed, he needs to come before the committee and testify under oath so we know what the facts are and why we would be using taxpayer dollars to resolve this. It's a challenge Ken Paxton faces, though. He has fought these depositions. 
He has fought and hasn't even filed his personal financial disclosure statements to say what he owns. It's the statements that Greg Abbott, Dan Patrick, Don Buckingham, myself, we all file. And, and this sort of pattern that is developing with Attorney General Paxton is very troubling. And so um, what do you say to those who say, ah, Senator Springer just doesn't like Ken Paxton? What do you say to that? You know, it has nothing to do with whether I like Ken Paxton or not. He's the only attorney general I've ever endorsed. Um, you know, I think it's just doing the right thing for Texas, for Texas taxpayers. They want to know that their elected officials are being honest, trustworthy, and aren't profiting off of their position in power. And um, I know that the attorney general, in response uh, to your filing, uh, he said, uh, Springer has to leave the Senate because he was such a bad senator, wasn't going to get reelected and needed a job. Why should anyone listen to his sour grapes? What do you say to that? You know, I, I think he's trying to give a lot of smoke and personal attacks rather than address the fact that he you know, filed something that said he's guilty. Look, I think it's an insult to the 30 million working Texans that go out every day to make an honest living. I didn't profit off of my time in the legislature. I needed to come back and work. I don't think there's anything, you know, bad about that. Um, and if, as far as effective senators, I was always one of the top rated conservatives, both in the Senate and the House. I'm proud of all the legislation that I have passed over the 12 years. Uh, again, I think this is just lashing out and uh, not wanting to face the truth that basically, you know, not basically, he did say he's guilty in the filings with the court. And is there anything else that I didn't ask you about that you would like to make, you know, make a point of? You know, Ken Paxton is trying to make a, a big thing that he's innocent. Nobody voted that he's innocent. We voted to acquit. And now he's out endorsing all these campaigns. Uh, you know, I'm on the opposite side on a vast majority of those. Uh, you know, I think voters, when they look, they're going to say, you know, do we want to go with an attorney general who won't sit down for a deposition, you know, hasn't said that he didn't use a donor's fake Uber account to cheat on his wife versus a senator that's one of the top conservative rated senators um, and, and go forward with there. I think that we're going to see an awful lot in this next election based on who do voters trust with their endorsements. State Senator Drew Springer, thank you so much. We appreciate it.